So our research question is, how does mental and physical abuse of minors affect society in the United States? Caitlin is doing the environmental lens, Ryan's doing the social, cultural, Katie's doing the ethical, and I'm doing the futuristic. To introduce minor abuse that occurs in the United States, here are some statistics. According to American Society for the Positive Care of Children Organization, child abuse reports involve 7.5 million children. 74.9% of victims are neglected. Almost 20% of victims are physically abused. 8.6% of victims are sexually abused. And finally, 7.1% of victims are psychologically maltreated. As examined through the ethical, cultural, social, environmental, and, phys and futuristic lens, child abuse in the United States will negatively affect the mental and physical health of minors. The first lens that we evaluated was the environmental lens. The environmental aspects of minor abuse in the United States influence a minor's transition into adulthood and perception of society. The first bullet point. According to Melissa J. Doak, author of the information series on current topics, in families which the husband struck the wife, the child abuse rate was much higher in comparison to other families. A statistic to support this example is about 22 per 100 children are experienced child abuse due to this environmental factor. This introduces the idea that the environment abuse in person affects minors, further meaning that the situation, the home life situation can either increase or decrease the extension of abuse that might occur, consequently emphasizing, expressing the importance that environment has on minor abuse in the United States. Moving on to the second bullet point, also stated by author Melissa Doe, children in households with one or more biological unrelated adults <coughs> have the highest risk of death. This emphasizes that minor abuse relates to result in extreme fatalities which can be impacted due to the environment. There are multifarious environmental factors that can affect child abuse in the United States, but as shown through this specific quote, the relationship between an adult and a minor is one of the examples that contribute to this factor. The abuse resulting from these situations can influence the future of a victim, which Jen will later explain through the futuristic lens. In conclusion, victims have the opportunity victims may develop the rage or the idea that punishing others is acceptable. And a specific example that relates to Chris Brown and the mental abuse that he experienced as a child shows his transitions into adulthood and his perception of society today. According to this graph, child fatalities by type of maltreatment in 2008, also found maltreatment types at a high of 39.7%, neglect following at 37.9%, and physical abuse at 22.9%. As also shown on this graph, other types of maltreatment, including medical neglect, psychological abuse, and sexual abuse, are all at 2.3 to 0.4 percent lower. Ryan will now explain the cultural and social aspects of minor abuse. Child abuse is socially one of the largest issues in the United States. Approximately 80 percent of young adults that have experienced child abuse will grow up to develop at least one psychiatric disorder like anxiety or depression by the age of 21. Victims of child abuse can become antisocial or violent, and they are 11 times more likely to grow up to have a criminal record or a juvenile record, and 3.1 to 2.7 times more likely to grow up to be arrested as an adult rather than kids who weren't abused. According to this graph, as you can see, the poor and low-income families have a higher rate of child abuse rather than the high-income families. In the urban society, around 45% of child abuse occurs in the home, in the poor um, income families, and in the suburban areas, around 35% of child abuse occurs, and in the rural areas, around 39 to 40% of child abuse occurs, versus the high income families, which only around 20% of child abuse is likely to occur, versus in, in the suburban areas, around 15% of child abuse is likely to occur, and then in the rural areas around 11% is likely to occur. And that can be the ethical ones. Connecting with what Brian said, having poor morals as a child growing up into adulthood will affect their ability to be socially active. Some may fall into a depression, some may be abusive as well, and others will realize that what happened to them was morally wrong and stand up against it, contributing positive character attributes into their community. Therefore, child abuse has a large impact on a minor's moral development and becoming. A quote from Jennifer Creeks and Teresa Gonzalez, who wrote in partial fulfillment of the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Science in Child Development states, the emotions and behaviors children learn from their experiences in the home affect their type of moral relationships and understanding they form as they grow. 
This gives off the idea that when children grow up and get the impression that abuse is okay or abuse is normal to experience, it will affect their understanding of morals as they grow into adulthood. As they get into relationships with people, they may begin to portray abusive behavior as well, because that is what they are used to seeing and that is what they believe is acceptable. <clears throat> In a second quote from a report presented by Suzanne Miller, who is a registered nurse and has dealt with many child abuse cases before, states, In one example, a parent reluctantly brought her child to the hospital for evaluation but feared that when the doctor saw the child's bruises, the reason she was brought in for medical care to begin with, she would be reported for child abuse. This expresses that people are who are committing the crime of abuse are being hesitant to admit and confess to their actions. Therefore, it is resulting in the children struggling even longer, essentially committing accidental child abuse crimes. Violence is futuristic. Child abuse in the United States is related to futuristic problems in adulthood. The topic child abuse obviously has a negative connotation, but is commonly referred back to the Bible as morally correct and truly the only way to raise a Christian child. Corporal punishment is also said to create authority between the adult and the child and teaches the difference between right and wrong in the household. An example that Caitlin mentioned before is Chris Brown. Chris Brown is a pop singer and writer who creates his own music and has a bad reputation in today's society for sexually abusing women. From the age 7 to 13, Chris witnessed his mother undergo abuse from multiple boyfriends and never had a stable example as a father. This may have caused the damage she is doing to women and may have not realized it was unacceptable, as Katie like past stated that you can either rise to the occasion and realize what happened was wrong or fall back into the cycle of abuse, and this is an example of Chris falling back into the abuse cycle. In this graph, it shows abuse and neglect of American children has increased 134% since 1980. In the first one, 1980, it shows 9.8%. The second, 1986, 14.8%. 1993, 23.1%. Now is our solution. Our first solution to reducing minor abuse in the United States is the government social services need to expand their watch for younger and fit parents meaning to pay attention to signs of physical or mental abuse and neglect that children may be expressing. There is no way to completely stop abuse, but there are ways to limit abuse, with access to more hotlines and websites for children to report their own abuse if they have access to the internet. A second solution that we would like to propose is to create awareness programs that will enable minors easy access to report and get help if they feel as if they are in a dangerous situation in their community. Relating to the first solution, that could be a simple minute detail as adding easy access into the internet. One of, our, one of our limitations is not enough government funding to create these programs, and another limitation would be not everyone having access to internet at home or a device that lets them get on the internet to contact someone that they need help and that they're going through a rough scenario at home. And here's our work cited. Okay, a few questions. I'm going to start with you, Caitlin. Um, so reflecting on your colleagues' work, which one had the greatest impact on your overall understanding of the problem the group identified? So Genevieve evaluated the futuristic lens, and I felt like that had the greatest impact on my solution and the research that I developed because her information and the conclusion that she found directly related and showed that Child abuse in the United States can affect anyone, and it does impact the adulthood and the future of the victim. It doesn't just affect them in the time frame that it happens. It has futuristic effects on them. Um, next for you, Ryan. Um, what is a way in which your team's resolution makes you think differently about your own individual research? I feel like our resolution or solution was that there wasn't a way to completely stop abuse, but there were more ways to like reach out and create more ways for kids to um, have like access to contact people for help. And my own solution was for like the government to check up on people who don't seem like they would be unfit parents, but overall that wasn't like more or like logically reasonable. Okay. Uh, Katie, you're next. Uh, describe an argument from one of your peers' individual reports that made you think differently about your team's solution or conclusion. Okay, um, obviously the Chris Brown example that was stated in the Caitlin and Genevieve's paper influenced my um, 
view on this topic because Chris Brown um, went through abuse while he was growing up as he watched his mother go through many different abusive boyfriends. And that connected to my, that helped me view the ethical lens a little bit differently as he grew up with poor morals and he never got out of that cycle of setting poor morals for himself. Good. And finally, Genevieve, uh, describe how the content of the team presentation was changed as a result of group discussion. So we had a lot of counter arguments in our individual research, like research essays, and like coming along with the presentation, we wanted to like get rid of those to, I guess, make ours stronger. So several of us, like um, Ryan, had an Oprah story, personal story, and it showed that she like rised above the occasion and didn't fall into the cycle like Chris Brown. So we chose the Chris Brown would be the stronger one that would help show our argument better.